everyone, Siege Link here. It's time for our boy Warhawk. See what he can do in a TTT. So last time, I'm not actually sure if this is the last, no it wasn't the last TVT I saw of Warhawk, but there was a TVT of Warhawk that lasted um, almost, it lasted over half an hour. I think it was 34 minutes specifically, 34 minutes like 33 seconds, or something along those lines. And I think it was 34 minutes 27 seconds. And uh, that was on Ephemeron. Nightshade, I think, is a bit more of a... Yeah, this is definitely a harder map to have a long game on because there's so much high ground area and the, the attacker is going to have... Come late game, the attacker is going to have a lot of advantages because mid-map there's so much high ground that once you're expanding to like four, like five or six bases, the opponent's always going to have the, uh, the high ground uh, advantage. And that's going to make taking fifth and sixth bases in TVT insanely hard. So I, I highly doubt this is going to be, um, I highly doubt that this is going to be a, a late game one. But I also don't expect this to end early either. So in the top left, the person has pretty much been carrying this team overall, Warhawk. And in the bottom right, the orange Terran player, currently up 1-0 over me specifically, a Lamebird. Or a Firebird, whichever one you want to do it. Warhawk is sort of like our designated all killer, but hasn't actually all killed yet, surprisingly. He's gotten close, he's gotten a 3 0, and should have won the fourth, but he reacted very, very poorly to the disruptors. And uh, that cost him that game. Yeah, that, that was a game that it definitely took a lot to, for him to lose that. So, so far, no difference. Um, did he? Okay. For a second, I thought he canceled the gas catcher, but no, his is just a lot quicker. <laughs> I was like, why in the world would you cancel the gas, guys, in, like, any matchup, let alone TVT? So, yeah, Flamebird does go Factory. Uh, he, he was going Reaper Hellion, and he went Barracks Factory. So, personally, I would kind of want to see Warhawk go CC first and just see if he can defend, because one of the things about Reaper Hellion is that you basically can't get into main base. Reaper Hellions do so little damage to Supply Depots. So for that matter, I kind of I would kind of like to see Warhawk do that. And it looks like he is going to do that. Supply Depot there. I don't personally know how to wall off, especially as Terran on this little jump up ramp here. And it's also not really something you need to wall off. Actually, that just made me think of something. Here you could actually jump up if they add a little thing there. So... Imagine a map where there's like three jump up points, but all of them can be walled off with like one or two buildings. So you have maps like right now, like Sleepers, Triton, Nightshade, even at like Eternal Empire that can just be walled off with like two or three buildings. Imagine a map that like you can just like supply depot block like all like, like two jump up ramps, but there's two of them. So like unless you're going to wall off, you're basically always going to be able to jump up there. That would be very interesting. And it would also make things like Mass Reaper kind of interesting because there's like different access points if you don't uh, do anything. Warhawk's going to build a bunker, which I like because he went CC then factory. Yeah, I'm actually pretty confident here that Warhawk's going to do it, especially because... Okay, I'm a little confused on Warhawk's part. I don't know why he would go... Like, his reactor and factor are basically perfectly timed to float up and then make two Hellions at a time. And yep, there's going to be a proxy starboard. My only guess is that maybe he wants to make like one or two Hellions and then make a Cyclone if he thinks he's going to face this again. Now, an interesting thing about last game is that if I did, if it did sort of register in my mind that the proxy, that the Stargate, the Starport was proxied, and I had a turret in each base before the Banshees came in, I would, I would have just flat out won that game, because I killed all of his Reaper Hellions with my Reapers and did some decent damage. So I would have, and I, and also I denied his second base. So I did so much damage. He, he basically had to do a ton of damage with those Banshees, which he did. So. But the difference in this game is that Warhawk isn't playing aggressive, and somehow those units pass by each other. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna go around. Alright, he's gonna pull his marines out. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. I think what you should just do is just keep them in the bunker, and then... Because, like, this is the thing, they, they, they don't kill aliens well. 
He's barely able to kill them with all of them super low health. It looks like both players are kind of trading equally here. Ooh, it's going to be a BC rush. Ooh, that's interesting. And it looks like it's actually going to do very well versus Warhawk here, because he's going Viking and he's not making a reactor immediately. And one Viking does not do enough. One or two Vikings does not do enough against BCs. So he's going to go Liberator into BC. He's got nothing at home. He's got two Marines and a Siege Tank. Okay, four Marines. So that's enough to defend Reaper Hellion, but not enough to defend basically anything else. Marines are okay against BCs because of how slow BCs are, and yeah, it looks like he's going to start looking for it. He should know that it's not on the third base, though. He should know that it's a bit far. Like a proxy starport location, the best locations for something like that would be definitely here or here. So yeah, it looks like he's going to see it, and if he denies the BC, this could actually just be straight up GG. Yeah, if, if he denies that BC, this will be gamed. BCs take so... Because he's going BCs, he's not going to get any unit out. Oh, he's sending his marines across. Yeah, if this... This, I think, might be game. Like, Warhawk said he was, he was just flat out countering his opponent, and you know the only reason he's scouting this is because he saw him do it last game against me. He's going to send his guys over to try to help, which they will actually get there. He might actually be able to kill the marines, but this is at least going to start burning. Oh, it's so close. I don't think he gets it. Yeah, he doesn't get it, but it will start burning. And he's not sending an SCP across. So he's going to have one BC, two tanks, and six marines for this push. He's got a siege tank back at home. He's got at least one viking. He's making a raven. And actually, if he shuts down the opponent's BC, and he's making a cyclone, I, I think Warhawk get gets this. It's really going to come down to the micro capabilities. Now, does he... has he seen it? Okay, you definitely have seen it now. Personally, if I was Warhawk here, I would be pulling you guys. Okay, definitely don't want to do that, Warhawk. In this case, when your opponent's this far close, and he's got a BC like this, what he needs to do is shut down the BC. No, Warhawk, you don't want to do that. You don't want to put auto turrets. Oh, no. Yeah, that's going to be him. Warhawk reacted very poorly to this, and that, I knew that's basically the one way he could have lost this game, and that's exactly how he ended up losing it. To be fair, another factor is that I think he should have sent more than just four marines, because four marines, you know, killed the starport very slowly. If he, I mean, if he sent five marines, he would have killed it. That's how close it was. The thing is, you don't want to sacrifice your guys to kill his opponent's units, but you can't give them space. If you give them space, that's what's going to happen regardless. And also, this is why you shouldn't build super supply depots, because if he loses that, he can't make a single unit. It's literally not possible for him to even get to equal supply. Now the BC is low, but even if he defends it, his opponent's macroing behind it, and he's in a perfect spot. Oh ho ho, 3 HP left. Now he didn't lose the, C the CC, so it's not complete game yet. And luckily for him, he actually has two supply depots back here. He's not moving his guys forward though, Warhawk. Warhawk, dude, look how far how far range that tank. That tank is nowhere close to being able to defend. He's also not lifting his barracks up. And, and like I said, he just he just flat out can't make units. That's why you don't build super supply depots. Warhawk, you've got enough bio. All you gotta do is just siege up on the top of the ramp. That's all you gotta do. So yeah, good build, good execution, or good idea by Warhawk, but terrible execution, and that's going to cost him this game. This basically cannot be won. He's down a base, army, by a massive amount of workers, and with double eBay coming up, he's going to be behind uh, upgrades as well. In fact, funnily enough, Warhawk doesn't even have... He's got Mag Magville Accelerator, and two starports, but only one factory. If you're not going into mech, you shouldn't build Magville Accelerators. <laughs> because if you're only making one cyclone at a time, it doesn't actually really help out that much. Especially in TBT. For a second I thought that was Warhawk, and I was like, I kind of like that, because you can at least pick up a few units first. I also don't see why you would move them over here. You, you know you, you've killed the starboard, so it's not really...
not really any reason to have that. And despite having these guys not mining, he's not actually uh, repairing. Probably because he doesn't actually have the money. Yeah, but I, I hear this from tons of people. You know, no, 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 it's perfectly fine making supply depots in your wall off. Nope. Nope, it is not. If you're reliant for supply depots, you need help. You need help. I'll do it for this game. I kind of knew that that was definitely a possibility. Uh, Warhawk, I think for the most part my team kind of crumbles in general, even me sometimes. We kind of just crumble if we face something we don't expect. And he didn't make BCs last time, mostly because I killed a good chunk of his uh, workers with my Reapers. But I also think that even though he scouted it, once he saw the starport right there, he should have sent more Marines there. Like, four Marines just kill the starport super slowly. Like, personally, if I was him, I would have either... I would have moved like probably three more marines over so he could kill it at a decent time, but not like to the point where I'll, I'll have like nothing at home. Especially because if that wasn't a BC, he would have, like if, if his units didn't come over, then he would have killed it right before the BC popped. If it wasn't a BC making, his opponent would have been able to have a Banshee though, and he would have been able to kill the marines. Same thing with the Liberator. Even though they might have a bit of a hard time killing the Marines, there was only four of them, so it could have definitely happened. So currently it's 3-2, we're down a game, which is surprising against BBQ, they're one of the bottom teams. But this is kind of their start to make a comeback here. They need to win every single game, and we need to lose every single game in order to you know, get a spot in the playoffs. So we'll see how next game goes. On trade.